Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just delivered part three of our Resync series, Overcoming Materialism. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Okay, so we are working through this series on resyncing our souls mm -hmm. with God. We've talked about the Word of God, we've talked about prayer, mm -hmm. and today we talked about something that can hinder us from syncing with God, <laughs> greed and yeah. materialism. We yeah. talked about how to overcome that. Yeah. Um, and so we did have some questions come around. Uh, the first one I want to ask you about is the Malachi 310 challenge. Sure. Um, you explained the challenge uh, in your message, um, but explain it here just quickly and then tell us how does someone do that? How does someone sign up for it? Yes. yes. And my apologies to the early crowd, the first service, I forgot to get into that detail. Mm -hmm. uh, and I realized that when I was in the atrium and a man came up and said, I'm taking your challenge. I'm like, great. I forgot to tell, tell you how to do that. It's, well, you can do it any which yes. way you want, but okay. it would help us, mm -hmm. especially just in the tracking, mm -hmm. if you'd go online to um, I've got it right here. faithbridge.org slash M310 uh -huh. or text to 797979. Mm -hmm. Text M310. M310. And that way we can get you sort of officially on that list and we can pray for you as well um, during the 90 day challenge. And then you'll also want to write on your envelope or your check. Uh, you can do it that way as well, That's right? And 310 on there as well. Yeah, good. good. Yeah, so excited to see what God does through that it's challenge. Always it's always exciting. It yeah, is. there's always so many stories of God's faithfulness through yeah. that challenge. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about tithing. So the question came in that said, Ken, wasn't the tithe specific to the law which the Jews lived under? And weren't there three tithes they had to pay? Is this a general tithe of 10% something that you benchmark? Um, because what does it look like in the New Testament church? Sure, yeah, right. In the Old Testament, there was all sorts of things. Um, so let's go to New Testament. Okay. Jesus says uh, one day to the Pharisees, you honor me with the tithe, mm -hmm. but I'm looking through to your heart and I'm seeing what's going on there. And we've got a problem. He said, you should tithe, but, and then he goes on uh, from there. And now let's go to another passage. He. I'm thinking of the scene when he was sitting with the disciples and they were watching the people putting their offerings in and the widow goes up, drops her last two coins in. He says, mm -hmm. that was impressive. If you want to know what's impressive, not the tithe. She just gave everything. She just poured her, her whole in there. Talk about surrender um, here. And so... I think uh, when sometimes people say, so is the tithe just, isn't that an Old Testament thing? I say, well, yeah, that's where it started. Jesus did allude to it one time, then he built on it. And then of course he didn't give us 10% of his blood and 10% of his life on the cross. He gave us 100%. And so when we move into New Testament standards, the tithe becomes a floor, not a ceiling. Um, now, realistically, in our overextended day and age, it feels like a mammoth ceiling for a lot of people um, to even consider, wow, that would be like a huge step of faith. But the questioner is right. You move into New Testament times. The tithe is a floor. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, why don't you just go crazy with generosity? Because why? Because I've made you rich through my poverty. And... Uh, so don't limit yourself to the tithe. All right, let me ask you a follow-up question to that that um, I've asked myself and the pastor, been curious about. So the 10%, let's just say that's my that's my floor, that's where I am, that's what I'm working towards. Uh, does that mean 10% anywhere, like to organizations sure. or to other people, or right. is that 10% to the church? Yeah. I'm a little hesitant to even speak to that. Here's why. Because... 
um, these kind of questions can become legalistic, mm. and I don't want to be legalistic. What Jesus was trying to do was not put burdens on our shoulders, but lift them off so that we could experience his blessings that work like a sail that has captured the wind that's propelling it forward. But with that uh, preface, let me say, here's what Suzanne and I do. I'll just tell you how we've worked this out. She and I have always said, the storehouse of the Lord we think is the local church. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give back to the local church that we are at 10%. But we do also give offerings above that tithe that we support some uh, missionaries, some people on campus, on crew, staff, some uh, World Vision, little children. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are above and beyond. The risk, and then of course, uh, in the above and beyond, we also give at the school the deal for the PT, you know. I think the temptation is if, if I'm speaking for us, if the were lines start uh, changing that and saying, we'll just lump it all together, it's easy to start begin to say, well, really, this is roundaboutly giving to God. And, and you know, people are like, now, what about the Republican National Committee and the Democrat? And that's kind of giving to God. It's like, yeah, I don't know that, that, go ahead and give to those things. But I'd say, why don't you tithe first to the storehouse of the Lord? And then you do the, those things above that uh, as you feel led. Good, yeah, that's really helpful. Um, okay, so another question came in that said, um, Pastor Ken, I have many friends who have criticized a mega church uh, for having flat screens, nice facilities, production teams, paid workers and kids ministry. And so understand that these things are necessary in our times to attract, to attract unbelievers. But I'm curious what your thought is on this issue. On this issue on the tension there. I think that their well, friends are feeling. Yeah, right. So, so well, I think I'm agreeing with the questioner. You're, mm -hmm. you're saying, I understand this is mm -hmm. necessary to reach people. I agree. Mm -hmm. That is the, the, the rationale behind it. Um, now, that said, I'll be the first to uh, say, we have to be very careful. I mean, you know this from being on our staff, and I mean, we're always looking at budgets. And I am regularly saying to our staff, let's remember, these are the offerings and the tithes of hardworking people who have entrusted these dollars to be stewarded by the church. Mm -hmm. Do we really need that? Um, or could we go another year or two with what we've already got? Um, it is a daily uh, struggle that we're navigating because the questioner is right. If you're going to reach people, mm -hmm. they don't want to come into musty, uh, sort of stinky uh, buildings. And many times they don't want to come in uh, where there's not a vibrant children's ministry um, and where there's no staff, you know, but they've got some ladies that have been volunteering forever and they love the Lord and they're doing their best. You know, so there's just this tension that we live in, but um, I always say uh, without any hesitation, we're doing our very best to be very good stewards of that. On the upside of being a larger church, we're able to do so much more good so for example, last year we gave away outside the walls mm -hmm. of the church, uh, what was it, like a million point seven, I mm -hmm. think, or something like that. If you added in our missions, our bridging, our bridging and, our... and then you add in the Ben DC mm -hmm. fund, the new church that's doing great mm -hmm. up there, and then the Harvey relief, and then the Syrian relief, I think it all came to about 1.7 or something, eight. Or something. You know, and well, uh, a smaller church just can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, but I, I think the questioner, the questioner's friends, surely wouldn't say, well, you're being stingy and not useful for the Lord. Well, I mean, I guess that's the flip side of the coin. Um, but I wouldn't say that either. I think all of us are trying to do what Jesus has called us to do in the ways that we've been wired um, and equipped to do that most effectively. That's good. You know, so I think that this, what this principle sort of that you're talking about, about good steward and determining, can we go another couple years, those things, um, how does that apply in our own life? Because mm. I think about, I mean, there is a part in the Bible where Jesus tells the man to go and sell everything mm -hmm. that he owns. And so you talk today about, you know, mm -hmm. how much do, how much do I need? How do yeah. I balance that? How do I make yeah. those decisions? Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. You know, and, and that is a great question. And I think it's a question which should always cause us a little inner wrestling. Mm -hmm. I still wrestle uh, with it, and I think that's healthy mm -hmm. because I think if we ever get to the point that we say, there, I got to 13%, I'm more than tithing, I'm get but if we lock it up and say, there, I'll never think about that again, mm -hmm. are we really living by faith mm -hmm. at that point, or have we just put it on autopilot? Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is where we have to remember what the Lord wants is our heart, mm -hmm. not the legalistic amount of money. He's not, he doesn't need the money. Um, he wants our heart. What is our heart most tied to this side of heaven, uh, outside of our loved ones? Mm -hmm. uh, our money. Mm -hmm. We, that just somehow makes us feel safer, even though the story makes clear, yeah, you're not safe from anything. You could get hit by the bus today. And then what? You weren't safe. You just thought that you were, you know? And, and so I think that there is, as we grow in our faith, a healthy tension that we should continue to say, is this the right thing um, for us? Um, now, you can slip over the edge on either side. I already illustrated the edge of um, one extreme. The other extreme, I think people sometimes can be a, a little bit joyless or legalistic. Uh, well, you should never, you can only drive uh, a Toyota, but you could never drive the, what's the next one up? The Acura or the? Infinity. Infinity or whatever. Yep. But that's too much. It's like, well, that's isn't that rather arbitrary? Mm -hmm. I mean, again, let's go back and ask the Latin Americans uh, who are driving our hand-me-down stuff. Is there really that much difference? You know, so I think we, you know, at least what I'm trying to do is um, what John Wesley said, make all you can, save all you can, give all you mm -hmm. can. Um, if we're going to make an expenditure, if we're going to make a purchase, uh, Suzanne and I try to f say, okay, is this a wise thing? Is it, are we being impulsive? Do, have we really thought about it? Have we slept on it a few nights? Uh, maybe this will pass in a week. No, maybe this is really something that would be very good. It'd be helpful for the kids or for family. Or, let's do this one. Um, but we're doing it within a responsible budget. Mm -hmm. um, and there's great freedom when we live with that sense of favor um, from the Lord. It's good. But it's not simple. Yeah, and, it's and very what complex you, yes, and it takes yes. risk. And, for and those I think of, a constant state of reevaluating. And that's yeah. the way it should be, yeah. isn't it? Because if we're really living by faith, mm -hmm. then we can't ever lock this thing up and uh, put on an autopilot for the next 30 years. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for the challenge today yeah. and uh, the things that we should really wrestle with as we resync with God. So yeah. this has been a great series. Looking forward to next week. All right. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.